Um, so in fact, let's see if I have it. Great, fantastic. So this is, so what you can do is you can use the value of R that I've given you, the value of Z that I've given you, this time series for the beverage elasticity that we've just seen, the one, the one right here, how uh, the beverage elasticity varies over time. So we don't know how the value of unemployment varies over time, so we take it fixed. We don't know the recruiting cost varies over time, we take it fixed, but we know that the beverage elasticity varies over time, as we've just seen. Then what you can do is that you can use epsilon, r, and z that we seem to get data star, and then, um, because we know where the, uh, the beverage curve is at any point in time, from that data star, you can then infer u star. Okay? Uh, and so this is, this, is, uh, this is what I'm showing you here. So this efficient unemployment right here, that's u star. This is actual unemployment, so that's just u. And this is a graph, of course, for the US. Uh, between 1951 and 2019. Okay, so that's a US graph. And so you see your efficient unemployment rate and the actual unemployment rate, a graph that we've seen many times. And so what, what do we learn using, uh, using this and looking at this? Well, there are many uh, interesting um, conclusions from that, uh, that come out. Uh, many interesting conclusions. So what do we see that's interesting on that on that picture? Um, so I guess the first question that people always ask is, you know, is unemployment always efficient? Um, and there are models um, that predict that. And here the answer is clearly no. Um, you can see actual unemployment is almost never equal to efficient unemployment. Um, so the first thing is that, according to our analysis, um, you know, the labor market is almost never efficient which means that government policies, fiscal policy, or monetary policy is always warranted to try to uh, dampen the fluctuations of unemployment on the labor market, to try to maintain unemployment at its efficient level. Um, so that's, that's the first key takeaway. Unemployment is almost never efficient. Um, another thing that we can see is that most of the time, the unemployment rate is um, too high. So actual unemployment is above uh, the efficient unemployment rate. Or in other words, most of the time, the unemployment gap is positive. So unemployment is higher than its efficient level. Okay? So which means that, at least under this, uh, you know, the values that we've used for epsilon, r, and z, uh, unemployment in the U.S. tends to be too high. Okay, so uh, if you took the average of the efficient unemployment rate and the average of the unemployment rate, you would find that that average is uh, positive. You know, if you take the difference, you will find the, the difference is positive. So that on average, actual unemployment is higher than efficient unemployment. So um, unemployment always tends to be um, too high. But it's not always the case. So if you, you know, if you look at uh, what happened in the late 60s, um, so if you look at um, this um, period here, so you can see that here, uh, for a good amount of time, the unemployment rate, U, was actually less than U star. Okay? Um, so here there was a time when actually unemployment was inefficiently low. Um, so it was a time when your market, the labor market was... Um, was too tight, you know, there are not, not, there are too few unemployed workers. And another period that we don't see too well, but that's actually the same feature is this period here. Um, this is the mid 50s, where if you look carefully, you see that the unemployment rate is, uh, is too low. What's interesting is that these two periods that we have here, they actually correspond to um, two big wars. Um, that corresponds to the Korea war, the first one, and um, the second period, of course, corresponds to the Vietnam War. And so this is somehow reassuring, because what happened during the war, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, I mean, two things happened. So one is that a lot of young males who would have been on the labor market working were shipped away abroad to fight the war. So the supply of, uh, you know, the supply of workers, uh, was reduced significantly, and, and we know that when the supply 
folds, uh, the tightness is going to uh, necessarily um, go up and the unemployment rate is going to fall. You know, if you have fewer workers who participate, um, your unemployment rate is going to fall. And so this uh, reduction in the supply, labor supply, or, you know, in labor force participation due to the, the war effort and the fact that a lot of young people who would have been working were shipped you know, to fight the war may have explained why, you know, during that time the unemployment was so low as to be inefficiently low. Um, and of course, another possible reason is that, um, you know, during that during war period, the government actually um, spends a lot in manufacturing, you know, weapons and, uh, you know, military infrastructure that tends to boost, to boost demand and also lower unemployment below what it would uh, be usually. So through the reduced supply and the increased aggregate demand, that could explain why during this period the unemployment rate was, um, you know, inefficiently low, which is something that we haven't seen uh, otherwise. Uh, what's interesting is that actually just in the last years, 2018-2019, here you can see that um, the unemployment rate was almost efficient. So basically it means that at the peak of the boom, just before the COVID recession, the labor market um, basically reached efficiency. So we were just at the perfect, just right number of unemployed workers. We were at full employment. Uh, and of course, you know, now we are way far from that because of that COVID recession. But just before that, we were um, very close to it. Um, okay. So one unemployment not efficient most of the time. On average, unemployment tends to be too high. There are very rare periods when unemployment is too low, and historically they've corresponded to war period. And of course, the last key takeaway is that in recession, unemployment is inefficiently high, and the inefficiencies are very, very strong in recession. So you can see here you have, um, you know, oops, sorry. So here we have the peak of the Great Recession. And you can see unemployment is really high and the unemployment gap is um, very, very, uh, very, very sharp. So this is the unemployment gap. So the gap between the actual unemployment rate and the efficient unemployment rate. So the gap between the two lines, the efficient line and the actual line. So here, if you can see, in recession, we have massive unemployment gaps um, that are very large, that open up. Uh, so you have one here, the unemployment gap. You can see another unemployment gap, you know, that opened up um, just after the dot-com bubble busted. So that's here. Um, you can see another one that so that's the famous uh, Volcker recession in the early 80s, where you have a huge unemployment gap. And you can see the Iraq war recession here, where again, you know, the unemployment rate was way above its efficient level. So you have big unemployment gaps that open up uh, in recession. Um, so in recession, there are, recession there are really times when unemployment is uh, so unemployment is high, but the inefficiencies are very, very marked. And so that means that if you're a government and if you want to maintain your economy at uh, full employment, so you want to close the unemployment gap, um, you want to get rid of your unemployment gap, recessions are time when you really need to um, implement stabilization policies. Um, so if you're, the, if you're the central bank, the Federal Reserve banks in the US, you're really trying to do everything you can in recession to reduce unemployment and, and often it's not enough. Uh, and so then the government also has to step in through fiscal policy, uh, for instance, by increasing hiring the public sector or increasing spending in other ways to try to really uh, combat the, this unemployment gap. Okay? So this is very clear that recessions are times when there's a big unemployment gap, big inefficiencies of the labor market and policies therefore 
uh, require. And so what we'll see in the last lectures is how to design policies actually uh, that can reduce this unemployment gap to make the situation better for um, unemployed workers.